Traditionally, Swamis, Yogis, Zen Masters all moved uptown to the rich and were sponsored and funded by the rich. And you would find Krishnamurti living in elegant apartments on the Upper East Side, drawing rooms and French furniture. And here was Bhaktivedanta, like in the depths of Calcutta, where the hippies were and where, where the acid heads were, the freaks and the amphetamine heads and the meth monsters. So it seemed like he was actually bringing some kind of ray of song and light to uh, the right place, the lower depths where it was needed. Rather than being a hippie, I was more of a seeker, a spiritual seeker, because I didn't have long hair and I didn't really identify with the, the alternative and revolutionary movement. But there was something inside me that was searching for something else. The way I first met Prabhupada was I was on a cross-town bus in Manhattan on Grand Street and uh, ran into a person that I knew. And this person on a scrap piece of paper gave me an address and he said, this is the address of an Indian Swami. He's lecturing three times a week and I think you should go there. When I first met Prabhupada, I was very impressed with the fact that he was elderly and that he was very learned and that he was alone. And that made me feel like I really had to help. I was wandering in the street and some of the boys saw me and gradually they came to me.